So yeah. we're here today with a uh, special guest, Zionic, to discuss the Rainbow Cup meta, as well as his thoughts about it and how he wants to play it out. So I'll leave the floor to him to introduce himself and what he thinks about it first. Okay. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, Zionic here. Um, oh, I need to turn off the stream. Oops, I had the stream on. <laughs> um, yeah, Rainbow Cup. Um, I'm actually very excited that they decided to go with the elements. I've been waiting for this for a long time, you know, each month. I thought the Nightmare Cup was going to be, instead of Nightmare Cup, it was going to be something of, um, you know, like water, um, bug, something of that nature. But again, they went with something very similar to Twilight, so I was kind of disappointed. Um, but Rainbow Cup is here. And I just love the fact that we get to, they localized it to Gen 1 and 2, right? So if they would have opened up the whole thing, we would see a lot different Pokemon coming in to the meta. But the fact that it's, you know, Gen 1, Gen 2, all our starters, um, plus some really nice flavor picks. Um, so, yeah, that's my initial thoughts on it. But glad to be here. Uh, we're glad to have you. And uh, what do you think aside from Quagsire and Venusaur, are the safe picks and what people should be either looking out for or building around or even including on their team. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Quagsire and Venusaur, obviously some strong picks. I was actually really surprised um, when I saw King's tournament video yesterday. He didn't run Venusaur. He ran Executor as his grass-type attacker. Um, so that was pretty interesting, um, shaking up the meta a little bit. But I think... Some other like staples, right, of the tournament. Um, I think Fortress, as we go on, is going to become more and more prevalent because it's going to counter those um, confusion type users, which is starting to like take hold of people. Um, you know, I've been testing out Slowbro. I don't have an Executor, but I think I think Fortress is definitely going to be a staple alongside Quagsire and Venusaur, Charizard as well. I'm really liking Charizard. I think. It's it's the best version if you have the legacy over Ninetales Antiflosion because I think it does well in all stages of the game. It does really well early, does well middle, and can do decent at end game depending on who it's fighting. But then Pokemon like Typhlosion um, really like stand out at end game when there's no shields up um, because it has that solar beam, that capability of if there's an Azumarill. Um, versus a Typhlosion endgame with no shields, it's going to get the Solar Beam off um, and one-shot the Azumarill, um, which really upsets Azumarill because Azumarill is like the best Pokemon for endgame. You know, no shields down. There's not a lot of Pokemon that can take out Azumarill, but Typhlosion can. Um, so, yeah, I think I think Fortress and Charizard would be like my two like staple picks alongside Quagsire Venusaur. And regarding both of them, Fortress, are you running Heavy Slam Earthquake, Rock Tomb Earthquake, or the slightly odd Rock Tomb Heavy Slam set? Um, so right now, I'm testing Rock Tomb Heavy Slam. Um, just just feeling it out. I like um, what Earthquake can do, especially endgame. Um, and if people think, you know, it's just going to be um, a Heavy Slam or whatever, but they don't shield when they get hit with that Earthquake... Um, but for right now, I'm running um, Rock Tune Heavy Slam. I just powered it up yesterday. Um, I spent all my Stardust to get... Um, what did I get? I got Fortress. I got Slowbro. Um, and then I got Raichu as well. Um, so just testing it out, Rock Tune, right now. I like... I like Obviously, having Rock Tune, I think, is going to be a must for me. Um, because it has the capability of handling that Charizard um, when they come in. Um, especially if their shield's down or they decide not to shield, thinking it's not going to be a rock tomb. Um, plus, it does really well against um, Pokemon like Venomoth, Pokemon like Mantine. Um, and then Heavy Slam, I like um, as a shield bait or just to do some chip damage um, before I actually go down in the fight. Um, but... Oh, my headset went down. Sorry about that. Hold on. Um, but yeah, as I see people typing in their sticks is saying he's running rock tomb and earthquake which i could totally see being super viable because i know there's been situations where um end game it's like oh if i would have had the earthquake i could have you know one shot that lantern you know it would have been gg 
um, but instead I had Heavy Slam and Rock Tomb, and it wasn't as good of a situation. But yeah. That's uh, well, kind of the same logic I was following. I mean, I originally had Rock Tomb Earthquake on mine to yeah. kind of surprise counter the Charizard and Fire types that would come in, as well mm -hmm. as Mantine, but then I realized that Heavy Slam and Earthquake would be a bit better for both shield baiting and just general damage because... In general damage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can totally see that, and I think as the weeks go on, we'll really start to see the moveset um, come down. I don't think it's going to be... Like, Quagstar's moveset, right, is, like, set in stone. You can choose any of them based on your playstyle. All of them work well. Um, but I think Fortress will start to shape up his moveset as the weeks um, go on because we'll see the meta really, like, come down to a very core group, and then that moveset will be determined based on that group. So you're saying Quagsar's moveset is already set in stone, or you're saying it's not? Oh, all of them. All of them are set. Like, uh, Mudshot Stone Edge is your lock-in, and then you could go with Acid Spray, Sludge Bomb, or Earthquake, based on your playstyle. Right, okay. Yeah, so that's what I mean, like, set in stone, where it's like, all options are good. The only option that isn't good is not having Stone Edge. Or Water Gun. Or, or Water Gun, yeah. <laughs> Which you could surprise, I guess, uh, McCargo. With water gun. <laughs> well, you could also run water gun with stone edge and acid spray to just bait out the mirror, but then you lose the actual pressure of Quagsire in general. Yeah, yeah, you lose. Yeah, you lose everything else. Um, all right. So the next question I've had for you is, do you think the meta will change from the Quagsor lineup with two flex picks and two counters, or do you think it'll stay like that and just solidify? The Quagsaur, explain that to me. I don't think I've heard that yet. Quagsaur is out of your six spots. One is Venusaur, one is Quagsire. And then you have yeah. two spots that would either counter or complement one, if not both of them. And then two flex spots that you can use on either a water type, a fire type, a flyer, or a confusion user to kind of round out your six, knowing that you're going to be fighting one, gotcha. if not both, of Quagsire and Venusaur in every team of three. Well, yeah. nearly every team three. I think... Um, so I think with the Quagsaur thing, I think that's definitely very relevant. And you, like, you need checks and balances through the whole thing. Like if you don't have a Grass-type attacker, maybe it's not Venus, or maybe you don't have that Frenzy plant, but maybe you have Ivysaur, right? Which is still a decent option. It's not going to be as good because the Frenzy plant will obviously hit harder. Um, but I think having the... The Quagsire and the Venusaur or the Venusaur-like Pokemon alongside checks or good synergies for those two. And then two flex picks um, is basically how this tournament is going to play out. Um, but obviously the biggest shakeup that could happen is if um, they do an update, right? Let's say they um, give Psy Shock the ability to confuse an enemy or something. You know, something like that where they change, they actually bring in status effect. Um, I think that'll massively mix up the meta. Um, but as of right now, yeah, I could see the Quagsaur thing staying strong unless there's something crazy that happens in the coming weeks, which totally could be because we haven't had a PvP update um, recently. So. And what do you think are sleeper picks for the... Uh cup that you think most people are disregarding either due to moveset or bulk or availability oh man sleeper picks um well a sleeper pick that i just started getting on was the confusion users like i've been aware of them but i haven't tested them and now that i've been testing them I'm like this is this is going to be meta relevant like actually battling with them and it's like you know slow bro if the venusaur um, is a vine with Venusaur, not a razor leaf Venusaur. As long as you shield the frenzy plant, you win and you don't even have to use any energy. You just confusion it down. Like, and then Charizard comes in and you can still truck it with confusion and hit it with ice beam. So it's, I think the sleepers right now, just from what I'm seeing in the meta is confusion users. People aren't as aware of them yet. Um, but I think they'll definitely start to be a staple on teams. Um, 
what would be another sleeper i'm looking from this beautiful drawing you guys have here um <laughs> uh i think people may not be prepared for double legacy lapras especially on a venusaur people may not know that the simulation actually shows that lapras wins in two shield situation because ice shard will destroy you like that you're just gonna get trucked um by ice shard so i think people may sleep on an ice shard lapras if they're not prepared and they think bringing a grass type user is going to be the correct counter because it's not um but yeah i think i think the confusion users um are the biggest are the biggest thing that people are sleeping on right now but it's definitely like starting to come to light yeah that was uh, one of the thoughts that i had originally another thing that well, another sleeper pick that I thought of and tested a bunch with is uh, Mudshot Polyroth, because from what I've yeah. seen uh, in my battles, once you get one or even two power-up punches in, most Pokemon that are at that point that either take the first two will not be able to take the third or an Ice Punch that's boosted, and yeah. it can even turn some of the matchups around. I mean, it's oh, obviously absolutely. not yeah. a top-tier pick, but it's a solid flex it's... spot that I've run. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's something, it's like, once it's out of control, it's hard to stop. Like, you have to stop it right away, especially, um, yeah, Polyrath. If Polyrath gets going, it's so it's so hard to stop. You have to have that, um, that grass check right away or that, you know, that right shoot coming in or something um, to really, to really lock it down. Um, yeah, that would be, yeah. That's definitely one of those sleepers that if you're not prepared for, not ready to stop on your team, it's going to do a ton of damage. Yeah. And another sleeper that people are mentioning in the chat and have mentioned in the past is uh, Confusion Venomoth, specifically as an Azumarill counter yeah. or a water type. Yes. Player. Oh, man. Yeah, I have. So I have a, a Legacy Venomoth with Poison Fang, Confusion, and Silverwind. Um, that I used in my Twilight Cup, and I absolutely love it, and I've been practicing with it, and it's... People aren't ready for how much damage that thing does. Like, especially if you get the boost. If you get the boost off the first Silver Wind, like, I pretty much go one, if not two, shields on the Venomoth because that Confusion will just truck people, and the Poison Fang, um, on top of that, having some nice matchups um, right against Meganium or against Azumarill, and then just Silver Wind everything else, and it just it just wrecks people it's like the silent killer that you didn't think was going to be a thing but it's actually a thing <laughs> aj your mic's going out there a bit man i guess we'll give him a second yeah it's all right <coughs> um someone uh Salcedo Photography says King did mention that he was probably going to switch out his um, his egg tree, but that was before his stream. Yeah, I thought he said he was going to drop it, and then when I saw his tournament, he used it, and he used it a lot, and he used it really well. So I think maybe that was a, a fake out, um, or maybe it was just a last second decision of um, you know, actually this is I practiced with it, it's really good. And watching him, watching him use it, it was like, oh crap, okay. That made me even think even more, I have to have Fortress. If Executor and Slowbro and Execute are going to be a thing, I have to have Fortress, like, locked. Yeah, that's for sure. And have you thought of your team composition, or at least six or eight you want to cut down to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let me pull up. I've been, I've been holding the trigger on stuff just because I'm trying to feel out how the sims are going and what people are saying and seeing other content creators videos about pokemon but i've started to like lock down on my picks um and i believe my current team right now is charizard Le legacy charizard legacy venusaur um quagsire with stone edge acid spray lantern with water gun thunderbolt hydro pump um uh, what was my other one i'll get it up here in a second Fortress, Fortress, and Slowbro. Um, Wait, so which legacy Charizard? Oh, Blastburn. Sorry. 
Yeah. Just okay. I just did, I didn't know if you were talking about the air slash flamethrower variant. Oh no no that no! Some no, people um, seem to like. I'm running wing attack, attack flamethrower, and that's pretty fun to use as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got um just community day um shiny Charizard because shiny flex is a thing, and then the community day Venusaur, Quagsire, which I'm running acid spray stone edge on lantern, which I'm running water gun thunderbolt hydro pump. Um, slow bro with confusion, psychic, ice beam, and then fortress um, with bug bite, heavy slam, and rock tomb. Um, and then my other two options, I have a set of eight right now that I'm working with. My other two options would be um, uh, Legacy Raichu, um, Thundershock, uh, Thunder Punch, and Wild Charge, and then Azumarill. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working with right now. Wait, so you're not running Earthquake on uh, Fortress? I just got him up yesterday, um, and I'm feeling out the Rock Tomb Heavy Slam, um, but I might switch to Earthquake because I'm noticing a lot of situations where it's like if I had Earthquake here, I would win. Um, but yeah. Also, I'm, I'm holding all my TMs for Worlds because I'm waiting for them to tell us what the meta is, and I don't want to be caught with no TMs. Have they dropped it yet? <laughs> no, no, no. I no, they haven't. That's why I've been holding off on spending. Like I dropped most of my Stardust, but I'm holding off on spending TMs because Stardust yeah. I can get back easily. TMs I really can't because my community is kind of small. So getting people out for raids is a drag. Um, yeah, there was a rumor that it was going to drop 30 minutes ago, but I guess it didn't. Yeah, but yeah. that's also the rumor that it's dropping soon. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, if it drops, if it drops while we're on this live stream, we can jump straight to that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but if it Drom jumps. Yeah, Drumps is on. Marco's on. Marco's listening to Spotify. I see him. And what do you think about the off-meta confusion users, like Execute, Slowpoke, or even uh, um, a funny one being Golduck? Yeah, I saw. I yeah, someone commented in my video. Um, that they're using Gold Duck, and I just I didn't even think about that. I'm like, wow, okay, yeah, Gold Duck, I can see it, right? Um, I think for me, I'm deterred a little bit. Um, I can, they're obviously they're viable, and I think they they have a place. But for me, that's too much Stardust to spend because you really gotta power them up. Um, and I don't have a surplus. I have I'm budget. Like I drop to zero every month for tournaments, so I really have to pick and choose. And I just happened to have a slow bro um, that had decent uh, PvP IV spread that was, you know, on Evolve was right at um, fifteen hundred. Um, so I just went for that, and then I don't have a Legacy Executor, so that's basically my only option when it comes to um, the Confusion users. But if people have tons, um, tons of Stardust, you know, they could definitely go. Um, go and try those. I haven't personally been able to test them, but I've been hearing good things. So if you had unlimited Stardust and you had a legacy executor, oh, yeah. which confusion user do you think you would go for? Oh. That's the tough thing, because the, the call that I'm thinking of right now, right, I think I'd still choose between Slowbro and um, Executor, but the tough call is Executor, Executor and Slowbro both lose to Fortress, um, but Executor loses to Charizard, while Slowbro doesn't. So that's that's where my toss-up is. But then Executor beats Slowbro, um, so that's kind of like where my trade is. It's basically I have the Slowbro as the Grass and Charizard counter while also having the ability um, to somewhat cover a, a, a Quagsire. Obviously, the, the shielding scenarios don't work out um, in Slowbro's way, but if the enemy isn't aware that a Psychic actually does decent amount of damage and they don't shield, um, thinking maybe it's Ice Beam or it's Water Pulse or something, the Psychic in the no-shield scenario will take out um, the Quagsire. So I think I'm still leaning towards Slowbro, um, but oh, it'd be one of those last second decisions, like day of. But so you're saying even if you had unlimited Stardust, 
You'd still pick Slowbro over Slowpoke. Um. Well, here, let's see. I think another factor in which confusion user you know moth is interesting, but you sort of have to pick up the maybe the fire weakness as opposed to slow poke and slow bro. Yeah. And you gotta pick up, you know, rock now as a as a bigger factor for Venomoth. Yeah. And Venomoth beats a Zoomerl, right? No other confusion user can do that, I think. Yeah. At so least I the think... legacy. So you said the Venomoth beats the other Confusion users, is that what you said? No, I think Venomoth loses to the Confusion users, but he picks up an Azumarill win with Poison Fang, doesn't he? I yes, recall. yeah, he does pick up the win with um, Poison Fang, I'm just looking here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Venomoth has a better matchup against Fortress, so that's a, that's a huge plus. Yeah. But... So what would what would you choose then between Slowbro and Slowpoke or the all, all personally four, if you could have all four? Uh, neither. <laughs> I would go with Executor. Uh, yeah. Executor or Venomoth probably. Um, yeah. Seeing as how I have, I have both legacies, um, I've tried Executor. I really like it. Ultimately, there's a little bit of overlap with Fortress and Executor, so I've been yeah. toying around with different teams. If you had to drop one legacy Pokemon, be it Charizard, Venusaur, uh, legacy <laughs> confusion user. It's not a valid question. <laughs> no. Um, if I had to drop one, I think what I would drop is I would drop Venusaur's Frenzy Plant, but give him Razor Leaf. So you'd pair Razor Leaf with Solar Beam? I'd pair... I'd pair Oh, I'd go, I'd go Razor Leaf. Oh, what's his, what's his other moves? I don't Pet, know. Petal Blizzard, Solar Beam, Sludge Bomb. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go big. I mean, with the Solar Beam. I don't know. I, I think the easy choice is you drop Venusaur and pick up Ivysaur. Yeah. Ivysaur and Venusaur have nearly identical matchup spreads. Yeah. Yeah. That so is if you had to drop one, I would just pick up Ivysaur. Um. And then I, I think the second option would be you drop Charizard in favor of Mantine. Yeah, mm. I was gonna say that because Charizard, and, of... Charizard and Sorry, Mantine cover a lot of the same things. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Charizard has like a better Magneton matchup, but then Mantine has better Water matchups. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. I like. It's yeah, actually, definitely... a lot of options for non-legacy teams. Um, yeah. I mean, like, Victory Ball is really interesting because he's got the Razor Leaf, and Leaf Blade charges up a little bit quicker, and then he can kind of give that sort of parting gift with Acid Spray if that needs to happen. You can also um, debuff with Leaf Tornado as well. Just run a full troll Victory yeah. Bell. Not a huge fan of Leaf Tornado, if I'm honest, just because it's not a guarantee as opposed to Acid Spray. Right. And it's not like it's particularly low energy. One question was, of what's the best Razor Leafer? I think it, it just really depends. I really like uh, Victory Bell, um, but, you know, he does share that uh, poison typing with Venusaur. With a Razor Leafer, I'd almost prefer to run a pure grass type, like maybe Blossom. Yeah, there was chatter uh, about just that to, just... Oh, you did? Okay, sorry about that. You just a question came up on Twitch. It's not It's not a necessarily like one is better than, than the rest. I'm sure you guys cover that. No, I mean, there was chatter about it in our uh, discussion channel here, but not actually in-depth oh. on stream. But I sure. Did, I did fight Gots yesterday, and he uh, wiped the floor with me a couple times with Razor Leap Blossom. Mm. Yeah. I mean, then again, I was running quad water, so that didn't really help much. Oh, yeah, that, that hurts a little bit. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think another Razor Leaf user that is kind of interesting that I've been seeing people do has been a Bay Leaf with Ancient Power. Yes. Leaf, yeah. Power, and I just thought I just thought to myself, if Ancient Power procs, God, God help your team. Like that reason is about to be trucking. Without a boost, Ancient Power one shots Charizard. Yeah. So, how's that for shield pressure? You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Bayleaf meta. The downside. Incoming. Yeah, Bay Bayleaf yeah. meta here. Yeah. The downside, of course, is you know you're you're losing the other grass matchups for sure, and even though it's not a legacy per se, it's just so expensive to charge all those up. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Thing is, I like. The... These... No, go ahead. I was gonna say I like the play that Razorleaf could have if paired with Quagsire's Acid Spray. Um, mm. Like, if you have a Quagsire versus Quagsire Mirror um, at the start, right? Um, the other enemy Quagsire is running Earthquake Stone Edge. You're running Acid Spray Stone Edge. Um, you build up to acid spray right not even fake out and go to stone edge or earthquake you just straight up build the sure. acid spray fast swap to venusaur that razor leaf now is going to be taking like a third of your health i think sure. it's like four three or four hits on razor leaf and you're dead so i think i like the play that razor leaf could be paired well with acid spray whether it be from tentacruel um or from quagsire yeah. There was a question about Tentacruel in the chat. Um, you know, I'll speak a little bit about it. I put it up in honorable mentions. Did you guys cover Tentacruel at all or no? Not yet, no. Not much, no. Yeah. It's just, it's got very unique matchups. Of course, it loses to most of the electrics. Um, but then it, instead of having like a more neutral matchup against Confusion users, it tends to lose. Um, it's it's a little bit all over the place when you start simming acid spray. A lot of things can be swung depending on whether you shield that acid spray or not. Uh, I, de I definitely see it as a good swing play. I just don't think it's as popular because normally it's used as like a really, really good response to Azumarill. So as long as Azumarill isn't super popular, uh, Tentacruel kind of stays behind a little bit. Yeah, I think another thing too is, um, you know, if, if you're going to be running, say, like Venusaur, you know, I always hesitate to add that second poison type that can take hard hits from confusion damage. Um, so I think that's another thing that maybe holds it back potentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think right now it's um, a little bit on the back burner. Because um, if you're wanting to go the acid spray route, you should probably go the Quagsire acid spray, which works out really well, especially um, if you know to build up to Earthquake energy and then go Acid Spray. Um, you can definitely get a lot of shields that way. Um, and then on the flip side, when it comes to Acid Spray, I know King um, was preaching never shield the first move from Quagsire, um, especially with Acid Spray users. And then you can take that to your advantage. Like you can go um, Stone Edge and then Acid Spray and get the shield on the second one. Um, so there's just mind games with it, which is, I like mind game Pokemon. I think that's why I like the Lolan Marowak so much from Kingdom Cup, is because you never know if it's a Bone Club or a Shadow Ball, especially if you store the energy correctly and not just straight go for Bone Club. Um, so you throw right. off their counting. Yeah, the downside to these mind game ones is like, you definitely lose big if it doesn't work in your favor. That oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Endgame's really bad place for me if I don't if I don't land these things correctly. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're able to plan ahead and stuff, and you're kind of able to while you're tapping furiously trying to get to that charge move, sort of, you know, think in your head, okay, so he brought out Meganium, so he's probably not so you know he's gonna you know have some kind of fire type in the back or whatever you know what whatever those three is depending on your team. If you're able to process all that information while you're battling that's mind games are great mm -hmm. it's just that's what king's really good at doing when he did debriefs his videos um oh, yeah so i guess another question for you uh would be how is your play style changing up for rainbow if at all are you playing more top heavy and uh damage dealing quick moves paired with heavy hitting charge moves or you're playing the shield bait game to try and draw them out and then hit them when you, on your own terms later on I think 
I think I'm finding my play style going back to what I did in Kingdom Cup with Alolan Marowak, where I like shield baiting a lot. Um, but then I also, you know, I may not even bring it, and I just go with the, the heavy hitting, um, you know, the basic moves like, you know, the Water Gun Lantern, you know this is a Thunderbolt coming or a Hydro Pump coming. There's no, like, there's no real guessing there. But I do find myself liking the mind games. Like, a lineup I've really been liking and practicing with um, has been Quagsire, Venusaur, Charizard, and then mind games with Acid Spray. And then if I land the Acid Spray on a shield, I swap to the... So if it's a Fortress or if it's, um, like, an Azumarill or something, and then it's something that's going to take super effective damage from my fast move, I swap to burn your health as much as I can before you can get out of there. Um, so I think that's the playstyle I've been going. Now, as the meta goes on and the more testing I do... Um, obviously the people that I battle against over time will figure out exactly what I'm doing, but like if I was to drop into a tournament and no one knows my strategy, it works really well for a best of three, but longevity wise, it's not, it's not the greatest, um, because people can know, okay, he's going for acid spray right here, so. Uh, that's solid. Uh, has it changed much? You said you did it in Kingdom, but did you do that something similar in Nightmare, or Nightmare was just shield pressure? Night Nightmare, I I worked on my Switch game, so Nightmare. Um, if I so for example, if I had the Toxicroak versus Toxicroak lead, what I would do, um, because we know we both want to stay in that and burn shields, what I would do is I go to first Mud Bomb burn his shield, he burns my shield, and then I go halfway to three quarters of the way through up to Mud Bomb, and I bail to Hypno so that I get one confusion before Mud Bomb, and then he Mud Bombs me, and then I try to get that second confusion so it either deletes the Toxicroak or gets him extremely low while burning his energy, and then from there, um, they bring in their Umbreon or their Raticate or their Skunk Tank, whatever, and then I just race to the Focus Blast or the Shadow Ball. Um, so I think the the Nightmare Cup was my Switch Cup. Like I, I switched hard on people a lot, um, especially in defensive and offensive situations. So and do you there think was that... no, um, yeah, the, there was no like shield baiting. It was just it was hard switches to absorb damage or get the advantage on the confusion. Do you think that would ever come back in this cup? Maybe not this early, but as the week prog the month progresses. Um, I think, I think the offensive switch, um, may come back w if Acid Spray becomes more of a thing. Um, especially if Razor Leaf. I don't think Razor Leaf will take over, but I can see it being the equivalent of a confusion to a Toxicroak. Um, and even more so with if it, if there was an acid spray on a Toxicroak and you hit a confusion with a Hypno, you guys know that would absolutely destroy. That's basically what Razor Leaf would do. So I could see myself converting to that to really win those those last like the best of three quick. Um, but in the long run, I don't think that's how my gameplay would go to because that style is meant for fighting type Pokemon in a psychic in a psychic world. Um, so that's why Nightmare Cup and Twilight Cup are so similar to me. I literally ran the same team. So my Twilight Cup tournament, I ran Toxicroak, Venomoth, Skunk Tank while bringing in Azumarill if they didn't have a Toxicroak for Venomoth. And then Nightmare, I ran Toxicroak, Hypno, Skunk Tank, and then brought in an extra Dark um, or something to try to mix stuff up but it was like the exact same play style. If you watch my games, like I swapped at the same time and did confusion at the same time, but I don't think I'll be doing that for Rainbow. I think Rainbow is going to be a lot of checks and balances and win the end game. Right. And an interesting question for you. If you had to choose two Pokemon from every category or subcategory to consider and then drop one entirely in a way like you delete it from the meta what would you choose 
So like for the okay, so, for the grass. So types. the five the yeah for the five types for this cup. Yep. Ooh. So I choose choose one to keep and one to kill basically from the meta. Two to keep, one to kill. Just because two water keep. types are a bit oppressive. Okay. Two to kill keep. one, marry one, etc. Kill, kill one, marry one, and have have fun with one. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's start with let's start with grass. I would. Um. Oh. Oh. I would kill Venusaur. Are we counting? We're count. Yeah, we're counting Executor, and Execute as Grass type Pokemon. Okay. So I would kill Venusaur. I'd, really? You think so? I. Yeah, yeah, because I, yeah, cause I like in a different category. Yeah, no, I. I oh, okay. Well, you want to put them in confusion category? Yeah, put them in yeah, confusion category. Yeah, I think so. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I would still kill Venusaur, um, because I like the idea of no legacy moves, because I know I have somewhat of an advantage if I have a Venusaur and they have a Meganium, um, because maybe they didn't play during Bulbasaur Community Day and someone like that. So I think I would, I'm going to be dropping Community Day moves, so I'd kill Venusaur because Ivysaur then becomes way more prevalent. Um, which everyone could have access to. There's no um, real, like, yeah. I would kill Venusaur, keep Ivysaur, and then keep... Um, who would be another grass? Uh, let's go... Let's just go with Victory Bell. I'd probably keep Victory Bell and Ivysaur, kill Venusaur. Does that mean the, all the others drop off as well? I guess, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, so we're keeping, yeah, we're keeping Victory Bell and Ivysaur to make it interesting. Um, let's see, Fire type Pokemon, Charizard, drop it. <laughs> I would keep um, Nine Tails. I would let the Legacy Nine Tails come back with Flamethrower. That just makes sense. Um, and Macargo, I would keep. Macargo is an interesting pick, also. It's... Yeah, it's really. I don't know. There's so with so much water. I just I fear picking that Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Macargo, Kabutops, and Amistar were originally in the first draft of the post, but then we ended up cutting it because there wasn't enough for uh, Rock types to actually stay prevalent in the meta. Yeah. Which would basically just be anti flyers and anti fire, but aside from that, yeah. you just get walled hard. Yeah. Although right, so Mudshot, got... Stone Edge, Kabutops does put in some work against uh, certain Pokemon. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've been looking for those legacies, haven't been able to find them, but... Um... Yeah, I scrimmed a lot with a oh, double legacy Omastar, and it's just being locked into a Charizard, or not even locked, how quickly it chonks through that Charizard is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I bet. by the time, you know, like, you get the animation, and then, like, suddenly you see it coming out of the you got all these like lights coming out like by the time the animation is done like you're already half health through the through Charizard and you're like what is hitting me right now yeah. so yeah but it it has this reverse effect against Venusaur with Vine yeah. Whip I can't imagine with Razor Leaf oh yeah and then Acid Spray on top of that one shot <laughs> like you come in you're dead <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um okay so we got Grass down we got Fire down um we'll go Bug Oh, I think I think I would drop Fortress because I think everyone just gravitates to it, and I want to see more Scissor and Beedrill action. So I would keep Scissor and Beedrill, and I would drop Fortress. Would you choose uh, Scissor over uh, Legacy Scyther? Uh, I don't know. I think I, w I think I would just choose Scizor because I just like it's just the personal preference. He's one of like my favorite Pokemon, so he gets the, the bonus the bonus pick there, whether it's Legacy Scyther or not. So I'd probably yeah, I'd stick with I'd stick with the Scissor. Um Have you tried it out much, Scissor? Like with no. Iron Head and such? No, not at all. No. No. It's expensive. I, yeah, because I I don't when I spend dust it has to be precise. I can't like I can't pick wrong, basically. Um, so doing like te unless I have it close, because back when back in December when PVP dropped, 
I mean, I'm sure most of us saw Trainer Tips live stream where he did the PvP battles with all the other content creators. Where we saw like Alolan Marowak and stuff. I dropped a million Stardust during that live stream. I, yeah. I had so much save Stardust and I just dropped it all. Um, not even all in Great League. Like, I did it in Ultra League as well. Like, I have some random Pokemon with that I powered up and I probably spent like two, three hundred thousand on those guys for no reason. Um, but yeah, I would, yeah. So that's why, yeah, I focus. I just dropped my stuff on, on Fortress because I can see it being so relevant, especially with the confusion users. But, um, so if we go, what do we do? Grass, fire, bug. If we go electric. Ooh. Um, I think I would drop Magneton. I is just out of jealousy. I don't have a leg legacy or double legacy magneton, so I drop that out of jealousy. Um, and then I think I would drop Raikou because, or I would pick Raichu and Lantern. I should say um, because I think everyone can get Raichu, and it's it's it does the role and it does it well. And then everyone can get Lantern, and I think Lantern is just a great Pokemon for the Great League. Um, and then last but not least, water. The Wait, one but the Raichu needs a legacy though. Yeah, Raichu needs Thunder Shock, but you could get by with Spark, which is not as good. Yeah, you can get by. You can get by with Spark in the mirror, like on the first on the first go throughs. Thunder Shock and Spark will get to Thunder Punch at the same rate because Thunder Shock will overcharge it, but then it'll beat you to the second one. So that's where like Thunder Shock kind of takes over. So Spark kind of does the roll initially, but then as you get longer into the fight, it falls behind Thundershock. Um, so. And then, water. Water, since it's so big, you can actually drop two, How many pick can five, I or four. I can drop two, pick four? Yep. Okay, I would... Um... Who? I think I would pick Blastoise, even if it's Legacy. It's my favorite um, Pokemon of all time, my first starter. Like, oh, I love it. Even though I don't even have it on my team. That's like the hardest Ooh. decision. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even have it on my team. I might have to switch that. Because um, I have a 1500 combat power, shiny with sunglasses, double charge move, hydro cannon, Blastoise. And I don't even have it on my team. <laughs> Which is... I think I would keep it though because then I would drop some other ones so that I could be justified to use it. So I would probably yeah. drop, um, I drop Quagsire, um, because then I think it would really shake things up a little bit, because he's just so good. Um, I would keep. Go ahead. Well, if you if you drop Quagsire, you're just gonna be decent. Totem. Sorry. If you, so drop you, drop Quag if you drop Quagsire, I think you'll see an increase in legacy Politoed usage. Oh yeah, and and Electrics will would take off. Yeah, that, it would totally mix. It would totally mix stuff up, yeah. which would be fun. Yeah, I'm de de crowning for the sake for the sake of discussion. I'm de crowning Quagsire. Um, I think I would, and I'm I'm just going off the pictures here. Because there's other, yeah. I would I would drop um, double. Oh no, I keep Blastoise. I would drop a Zoomerol. Um, Kinder Joy can stay in the regional and possible worlds. I hope they do some type of. I don't know. I hope worlds is interesting, but I think a Zoomerol should stay there. It's like it's too bulky and powerful for I think. Um, this kind of style. I don't know, even though I don't even have my team, but I don't know, it's just one of those Pokemon where it's like, it's it's god tier level. Um, Is it really god tier level in this meta, though? No, not not in this meta. I just think in general, it's, it's god tier. Um, in this meta, I think there's things that will beat it really hard, because you, you typically wouldn't take... Like, if we look at our regional cup team... Not a lot of people would have a double legacy Magneton, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that Probopass wasn't there. Um, 
but I think is I, I would drop Azumarill and Quagsire um, just because they've been so meta relevant everywhere else. I think other things should come to light, like Blastoise and Double Legacy Lapras and um, uh, oh my goodness, I'm blank. Uh, Politoed, like you guys were saying, um, and then like Polyrath or like Tenacruel or Kingdra. I wanted Kingdra to be good. The I thing will... that's interesting though is if you jump Quagsire, I don't see Blastoise being good because mm -hmm. Blastoise's main like one of the big appeals is that it has such a good Quagsire matchup. Yeah. And also dropping Quagsire makes Electrics better, which in turn yeah. makes Blastoise worse. True. Yeah. So yeah, there's kind of a domino effect there where. If you drop Quagsire, I think some of these other picks that you want to be good might actually be worse because Electric comes out more. Yeah, yeah very I'd, true. I'd agree with that. And, um, you know, I will say, like, one thing that I really like about Rainbow is that Quagsire is at the top, right? But it's mm -hmm. unlike other metas where we've had something at the top that's highly inaccessible. Yeah, or, like um, Lucario where people didn't hatch it. Or exactly. Yeah, or, kind of... or where the move sets sort of set in stone. Like, I mean, it's kind of cool to have something that's on everybody's team, but you kind of still don't know what's coming. Oh um, yeah, you have no clue. Like yeah, yeah. so that's that's kind of cool. And then you know, Venusaur also being at the top. Sure, it's a CD move, but Ivysaur is like a great replacement. So I think you know, I mean, if you could pick two things to have at the top of a meta, I think those are two pretty solid things. There are non-legacy options and there's a lot of versatility in moveset oh, absolutely. well and Justin you're running Ivysaur over Venusaur just because you have a better IV, Ivysaur than Venusaur right right yeah my my Venusaur really? my Venusaur IVs uh, lose to uh, some better IV executes and so I, I opted to run a good Ivysaur that I had um, mm. thankfully I He's saved also like a bunch of weather boosted Bulbasaur, so it didn't cost me a lot. <laughs> I, just, I, <laughs> yeah. I found one with really good PvP IVs. He also lives in Georgia. What was that? I think he just dropped entirely. <laughs> Maybe that was a reference to biome. I don't know. <laughs> from the I think it might have been. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I yeah, yeah. I didn't say this was the um, tactical smart way of dropping Pokemon. This is all like personal feeling to just mix things up. I'm going off <laughs> of emotion here. <laughs> um, You're just going for pure chaos. Pure yeah. Pure, I'm ensuing chaos. Chaos is a ladder. So, um, and then the confusion users. Um, <laughs> I would. Um, I have to drop one pick too. Uh, I guess I would drop slow poke, um, and then just keep. Oh, I'd actually yeah, I would just keep slow bro and execute. Um, nothing fancy there. I would just drop the other two. Um, they're pre-evolution, so that people don't have to waste Stardust, and they can just just evolve it and be closer, um, and then just use those two. That's not following oh, yeah. your chaos pattern, though. No, no, I went for simplicity on the last one. We got to really smooth but things. Out. The other <laughs> thing you have to consider, though, is if you if you drop execute, um, some people don't have legacy executor, so then that just becomes not an option for them. Mm. Well, I just made it unlegacy. <laughs> they just brought <laughs> it back. <laughs> How do you feel about? Well, since water is the most common type in Pokemon and it's one of the five featured types, myself yeah. and a couple of others have tinkered with the idea of a pure water team. Pure water team? Yeah, I've heard that. Don't lie. Don't lie. You have tinkered with that idea. I, <laughs> and nobody else. I have thought about it, and it's a really wet idea. Um, but uh, I don't know. There's just something about it that I'm just like, this doesn't... Like, it looks like it could work, right? So you got Quagsire, Lantern, Mantine. Um, what else would he, what else would he bring? Probably Slowpoke or Slowbro. Yeah, yeah one of those two. King. Lapras or you Blastoise, got... and then Kingdra, probably. Jeez. And then 
tentacle yeah, or mantine or lantern. Jeez, what that said, what that just screams to me is razor leaf. That's just what that screams to me. <laughs> um, I've I've thought about the idea because when I was um, yeah, I know like multiple like I'm running three waters on my team and that seems perfectly fine to me. Like one of them is lantern, which's got you know my electric you know the electric coverage a little bit. Um, and then Quagsire and Slowbro. Um, but I could totally see all of them going together because you can you can cover your electrics and your grasses with all the waters, and then the waters also cover everything else. So, oh, I could see it. Has anyone done it? Do you guys know of anyone that's done it in a tournament yet and it was successful? Nope. Uh, Never heard of anybody wanting to run only water types should ever. We should we put the challenge out there? <laughs> no, that's a joke because they all. I'm the uh, water type guy, and I've yeah. been testing a list of eight or nine different water types just to try and see which ones could work. So mm -hmm. I've had some success running uh, Mantine, Tentacruel, and Quagsire combo to bait out the mm -hmm. Razor Leafs, and then just smack oh. them back with Tentacruel Poison. or Mantine. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I was about to say I think the like the dynamic duo would be Quagsire and Mantine, and then bringing Tentacruel or um, Double Legacy Lapras or Slowbro or Kingdra. Yeah, or Kingdra. Kingdra with Outrage. You got to be careful on that. You can't sleep on an Outrage. Can't really you? sleep on Dragon Breath either. No, you can't. You're just it's like you're permanently getting slapped and then and then yeah. Uh, for a more yeah, interesting question. If yeah. you wanted to run a team of five, maybe six bugs and then oh. one extra pick. Go. One extra pick. Okay. Uh Fortress. Let's see, I'm gonna count. Fortress, Beedrill, um, Venomoth. Um, let's see here. Hold on. We're gonna go. That's where the line ends. That's where the line. Yeah, those <laughs> three. Those those three and a dragon. Um, I wish you. You know what? I, I wish Matt um, PV Poke would um, put a filter so you can choose the type. So you just go like when you get to the Rainbow Cup in the Great League, you could just click. Like bug types, and then it lists all the bug you types. You can just for you. search for the type. Oh, you can. Oh wow, that's new. Okay. Well, <laughs> you learn something new every day, guys. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Fortress Man, Vedral, Venomoth. Um, Fortress Vedral, Venomoth. I would bring Yanima. Right for that double proc capability. Um, so there's my four. Um. I think for a fun pick, I would bring Heracross, just because, I don't know, I think it's funny. I always wish it was good, but I don't think it will be. Um, and then lastly, I would have... Shiny Shuckle. Shiny? <laughs> oh, it has to be another bug, or it can be anything. Well, I mean, if you have the option, run six bug. If I have the option, run six bug, it would be Shiny Fortress... Beedrill, Venomoth, Heracross, Yanima, and then Shiny Scissor. Why is this even a question? Then you just lose to Charizard. It's, um, it's false. It's... Sludge Bomb. <laughs> also you have, no, you have no shields and half health. Sludge Bomb. <laughs> Rock to overkills Charizard full health. And the re Good reason luck, I ask though. this question is water is the most common type and bug is the least common type. The least common type. So, so we, are we about to throw down a gauntlet for everyone to bring one type to the tournament? Like, a pure bug team. Like, we have those trainers like mm. you find in the normal game where they're the bug trainer. Then you show up to the Rainbow Cup and you got your bug trainer and your, your water trainer. <laughs> No, but there was an interesting team, just for 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 laughs, really. That um, all the earthquake users, so like Fortress, Quagsire, Politoed, there's a few others, Meganium. 
But there's not that many. I, th I think it wasn't even six. But then you can also run okay. the... I don't know. The, the six? Polyworld is the only thing that has Mud Bomb that's eligible. And it's got Mud Shot Mud Bomb. It's not even Legacy. So that's kind of cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I like that... I think the because we saw a really kind of limited meta um, with Nightmare um, to some extent, but I think because Rainbow Cup has five types, like it opens the field to before it'd be like you know twelve to fifteen Pokemon that are really relevant, and now you could you could go with you know thirty plus that could actually could work. Um, obviously, the closer to meta you get, the more probability you have of winning, but you could still clear the field with off-meta Pokemon. Did you guys talk at all about uh, Legacy Politoed with Earthquake before I jumped in? Um, someone sort had of. mentioned, someone had just mentioned it, that they it was working really well for them, and I had been hearing good things about it. I haven't faced it yet, though. Epist 0 on uh, Twitch chat asked about mm -hmm. it. Um, I've been using it quite a bit in scrims, and I've tried to sort of shoehorn into the water slot as opposed to substituting Quagsire outright. I think it's not good enough to substitute Quagsire. That's that's my opinion. Yeah. It's just without the Stone Edge coverage, it it just loses. Well, it, it doesn't make up for the grass matchup in any way with Earthquake, um, and it wouldn't with Blizzard either. You very rarely get up to that. Um, yeah. you know shield pressure wise um, it's very nice to have surf but a lot of those matchups in the sim like it beating Lapras or whatever it really depends on like whether you reach a bulk point or break point um, with IVs and so like that's obviously not ideal for a legacy mod so I'm not putting it in my team as of right now with uh, Politoed, but I, I really, really like the Surf Spam. It adds a lot of sh shield pressure combined with Mudshot. Oh, yeah. And that'll definitely catch off um, a lot of people who aren't prepared, because shield pressure is, like, the biggest thing, especially early on in tournaments. Um, when you get to um, kind of towards the end, or if you're in, like, a pure tournament of, like, every single player is absolutely solid, there's no kind of newer players, um... Shield pressure in the in the early part of the tournament is a huge thing because um, people just aren't sure if they should shield or if they shouldn't. They haven't like chess pieced the game out. Um, if they know what their lineup is, that you know, if I don't shield this, um, I can get to this charge move with you know a sliver of health left, so that the next Pokemon coming in doesn't isn't able to farm me. But then they shield, and they still get the charge move off, and the next Pokemon comes in and farms them, and then they have so much stored energy to obliterate your team um so i think i think shield baiting is is a great thing but like you know if you were to have i don't know um who like massacre versus lex right it's not gonna it, it may come down to a shield bait but in like a tactical situation it's not just gonna be like surf span won't um won't get them it you know um, but I think shield baiting is does play a huge part in in open tournaments. But like the championship style kind of round, um, I think that's where Quagsire would come over top a little more. Yeah. There was another question in chat a while ago about Electrode and what your thoughts are on it. It's become sort of a meme in uh, the discussion channel, saying people yeah. are considering running it with Taco, Four. Hyper Beam, and Thunderbolt. <laughs> yeah. Dear God. <laughs> it's like, well, I just want you to picture that Electrode would probably be the size of a small car, and you have that thing rolling down a street at you. I mean, you'd want to get out of the way, too, if it's going to tackle you. Um, I would... I've been looking at Electrode um, right when out the gate because I knew I didn't have Legacy Magneton and I didn't have Legacy Raichu so I was like well I might need a Electro type attacker I have Lantern ready to go but if I don't go with Lantern I might need something else so I looked at Electrode 
and it's got it's kind of similar um, to Raichu non legacy because you'll have spark and discharge. So I think there's some merit there for it, but I think there's um, better options. I haven't tested tackle and hyper beam though, so I'm not sure um, <laughs> if that would work. But if it does, I mean, cool. I've never I've never seen a hyper beam used on me in a PvP battle yet, so that would be a first. Yeah, I've had people use Celebi's hyper beam at me and Mel Metal's hyper beam. Oh, okay. And I just laugh. Yeah. I've had a Snorlax hyper beam on me. That was pretty fun. Mm. It hurt. Hmm. And what are your thoughts yeah. on the trash can specifically? Those three. Um, I think Ampharos's day is coming when we get Mega Evolutions, like Mega Ampharos with its Dragon typing, having Dragon Pulse. Like, on the Marip Community Day, I told my wife, I'm like, I need you to hold on to all of these Ampharoses because if PVP ever comes out and Mega Evolutions come out. Dragon Pulse Ampharos might be a thing, so I'm gonna need you to hold on to those. <laughs> so I'm hoping they pay off. So Ampharos, I don't think is gonna be relevant because um, I think it's fast moves Volt Switch, which is just a little off. Um, Arcanine, I wish was more relevant. It's one of those nostalgic Pokemon, but I think it just doesn't have enough bulk and doesn't charge its move fast enough to be relevant even though it does have the wild charge unique coverage for water type Pokemon. We kind of know that you know wild charge is coming um, but I think it's just too squishy and then Celebi I haven't even looked at because I powered mine up so long ago um, and then just from hearing around that people aren't it's it's not as great and then it's charge moves um take forever obviously to get to so i think this meta is going to be about quicker charge moves um but yeah that's what i think about those three there was some discussion about arcanine just because it has so many viable well different legacy moves having bite fire fang and snarl as the fast moves along with wild charge crunch uh flamethrower bulldoze and i believe fire blast as charge so you, it's you could kind of pick and choose what you have there, but it's not consistent oh, yeah. enough to actually hit anything. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's, um, it gets because it doesn't have a lot of bulk. If it had more bulk, I think it would be a lot more relevant. But it's basically gonna get off one charge move, especially if it's if it's against like something like Slowbro or I don't know Lantern or something. You're gonna get off one charge move. It's like a hail mary. Yeah. Um, but if it was bulkier, then yeah. If it was if it was bulkier, yeah. And yeah, I get to bash Arcanine just because I, I drew that Arcanine in the trash can where he belongs. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I actually I actually heard a story about Arcanine where um he was supposed to be a legendary when in his concept but yeah. then they decided not to. I kind of feel the same way about him in the meta. It's like he's got some good moves. Oh yeah, but no, he's like, actually really, really like bad. Like on paper, Sorry. on paper, looking at his move set, you're like, I have found the golden ticket. This is my. And then you get into a battle, and then confusion hits you, and a third of your health is like gone. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot of salt in the Twitch because there's a lot of Arcanine fans. Yeah, Sticks, deal with Sticks, it. Sticks loves his Arcanine. Um, we were doing some battles the other night, um, and he let me know he was just just trying it out for nostalgia because he loves his favorite Pokemon ever. Um, mm. which is where I saw it for the first time, and I'm just like, yeah, this thing's really squishy. But I completely understand with its moveset it could be viable, but I think it needs a, it needs a tank boost. And what are your thoughts about yeah. Poison Jab Seeking? Oh, God, what? <laughs> I haven't even thought about that. What is, okay, so what's the word on that, then? Let me have a look at PvP. Oh, no, I it's, see not, when it's not good, jab. but Poison Jab is just more of a grass counter surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking at. Okay. So, Megahorn, Icy Wind, Drill Run. I was actually gonna put Sea King as like a fishbone inside of Arcanine's mouth. I ended up gotcha. not doing. That. <laughs> yeah. When we get to number 82, that's like. Let's let's tell. Let's look at 82's company. Next to 82, we have Magby, and then we have um, Pineco. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Seeking I mean, it's poison good. jab. That, yeah, it, it would 
it, it definitely would surprise someone, but again, it's like it comes down to the probability, um, or not probability, but the, I guess the odds, um, where the meta. I mean, it would surprise someone how bad it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, mean Thunder, you mean Thundershock would delete it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't even think about Seeking. I mean, Chin Chow. That's because you entirety. shouldn't have. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I scrolled down to the bottom when the list first came out to see who was in last, and I saw Pine Co. I'm like, yeah, this is this is interesting. Um, I was kind of surprised with Kingler and Krabby, uh, because their attack stat is so high. I remember when Boulder Cup was out, um, and I'm sure you guys probably have. There was like an old spreadsheet where it showed all of the stats on all the Pokemon, but this wasn't PvP stats. It was like. 15s across the board and you could change it it was like a an outlook thing or something a while back and i looked at the water type pokemon and it was like krabby and kingler have like the equivalent of what mewtwo's attack would be at 1500 combat power i was just like wait what and, and then the, yeah. when i saw when i saw water and i saw they're at the bottom I'm like oh never mind i'll forget about that <laughs> and then you realize crab has been in the game files for nearly eight months now and yeah, it's still somewhere on Niantic server side. And watch next next week they drop Crab Hammer and then Kingler becomes number one. <laughs> yeah, it's my Mudshot Kingler stunning. has been crying in the storage for a while now, so yeah. hopefully it doesn't become a, a leg like a uh, a legacy move. Crab Hammer just added to the move pool. Move pool. I mean, they mm -hmm. kind of did something similar with regionals though. After the first week, they decided to drop Probe Bass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, Probo Pass, so good. Good for you, bad for your opponent. Yeah. But that mirror is painful. Oh, it's it's a struggle, yeah. I never like mirrors. It's not fun. Uh one more one question for you. What mm -hmm. seventy five thousand dust and seventy five candy Pokemon would you consider needs a second move outside of Fortress and which ones don't? Oh lord. Um so the unlock charge move that you think they have to have it for PVP, like for this cup? Yeah, for this cup. Oh. Does King answer these this fast cuz I was not prepared for that one. <laughs> no, I I'm just asking now because uh JRE Seawolf is in the discussion channel and he's the guy okay. that puts out the nifty or thrifties every month. Okay, cool. What what seventy five k moves are there? It's just like that's Caesar that's what I'm trying Fortress, to figure out right, right? now. Yeah. Caesar, Fortress, that's Nama, what I'm... Lapras, uh, the Fossils. Lapras, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, that's it. Hundred, like you, one. you, if you're one to run run double legacy Lapras, you should find one of your friends, um, or someone in your community and trade trade them until you get good PVP IVs and then unlock for Surf. Also, I'm like, pretty sure yeah, Pinsir is seventy five. Yeah, Pinsir 75 as well. Alright, the answer is um, just Lapras and Fortress because you shouldn't be running anything else. Yeah, like, La like Lapras is still off of my radar for my team. I know it's really strong and I need to be aware of it and people will have it. But F Fortress is number one and then La if anything else, yeah, Lapras, you can't not have Surf. I guess it's just... What? Right, but my point is, I don't really think any of the other 75k move mons are that great here. Yeah, Come clearly yeah, you guys good. have a blind spot. Yeah. Clearly you guys have a blind spot here, because Ampharos is eligible, and it's 75k. <laughs> and again, right, it, does, it, doesn't show, have show its it doesn't have its golden locks from its mega evolution yet, so... <laughs> now point to the diagram where Ampharos hurt you, AJ. Bottom right, you can't miss it. Right next to Celebi. And I guess kind of flip question. <laughs> Which Pokemon do you think can run only one move and get by? Kingdra. I think I think Kingdra could run by because you're never going to get to Hydro Pump. <laughs> like, I think, yeah. I think off the bat, like, Kingdra, all he needs is Dragon Breath Outrage. That's it. Just Just go with that. Obviously, Hydro Pump or Blizzard would help. Probably Hydro Pump more. Um, but 
Yeah, because it's like you 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 would use hydro pump on like I don't know Charizard, Nine Tails, Typhlosion, um, maybe Quagsire, what have you. But it's like Outrage would s still take him out if you get to that point. By the time you get enough Dragon Breast, yeah, I think Kingdra would be the only one that I think, off the top of my head, you don't need a second charge move for. I feel like Raikou. Okay, no nah. Shadow Ball. No. Nah. You couldn't just run Shadow Ball Raikou? Because you lose on some of those. Like you kind of need Wild Charge yeah. on, on some of those matchups to, to really make it shine. And if you're going to run Raikou, you know, you just you just kind of need both. It's not really a budget option. Um, someone did bring up, up Mankind from the previous, the 75k. But that's only if you pull a mace and... You know, <laughs> Yeah, you evolve it. Well, the thing though is you could find a wild mantine that has really good PvP IVs and then you'd have to double move it for seventy five K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Money bags here. I think Slowbro could get away with uh, only one move. Same with Slowpoke. And Slowking. Executor also. probably could. Executor. Yeah. Slowking definitely gets away with one move because you don't use it. But that's a different story. Yeah. Probably Blastoise um, couldn't, but you know, yeah, arguably. You guys, you could you guys continue. I'll be. I'll be right back. Hold on. Sure. I think um, if you don't have a Legacy Venom and you wanted to use Venomoth, you could probably just use Silver Wind. Yeah, that's what I did for Twilight actually. Just because I didn't have. Yeah, I Venom, I double moved my Venomoth for uh, Twilight because I didn't have a Legacy, but. In scrims, I was finding a lot of times where uh, Psychic was useful, and then I literally didn't use Venomoth in a single match in Twilight, in my actual cup. Yeah, it sounds about right. I mean, there's some that are just strong picks that you use them more as a bluff, or just to force your opponent to not use what they would counter, and then you can play around that. Yeah, I mean, it was more just that I used Frostlash a lot. Oh, there was actually another 75k that we forgot about, uh, Electabuzz. Like, not as a Magmi, but as an Electabuzz oh, itself. Oh, man, that's rough. Alright, did we talk about, like, um, the couple, like, kind of top meta picks that have multiple okay. movesets? Like, I know we covered Quagsire, but, like, did we talk about the multiple movesets for, uh, like, Mantine... A um, bit of it, but Nine Tails, um, Fortress, and I think there was one other. Fortress we covered, Charizard we covered a bit, Mantine, Nine Tails, not at all. We didn't. So. We didn't talk about Mantine. Um, I think Mantine should have um, Aerial Ace, Water Pulse. I think because. Ice Beam and Aerial Ace cover similar things, and then Water Pulse will help you um, really lock down that fire, the fire type. Wait, so what, what fast move are you thinking, though? So... Because isn't so, Bubble Water Pulse kind of overkill? No, because I'd, I'd go Wing Attack, um, and specifically for the Venusaur matchup. Um, okay. If, if you go Bubble, you lose in shielding situations. The zero and the one, I believe, and the two, I think, is really close. Um, but then wing attack, you win all shielding situations. So then I'd have water pulse as the charge, um, and then wing attack aerial ace. But so I'm not, I'm not that running a mantine. But yeah, that doesn't sound quite right to me because I, I believe that bubble still win, uh, beats Venusaur. It's just a lot closer. Um. And then the biggest thing is Bubble gives you uh, better uh, energy generation um, and I think gives you better like matchups against a lot of the rest of the field. Um, definitely better water matchups, uh, better electric matchups for sure, mm -hmm. um, and a better Quagsire matchup. Yeah, and Macargo, um, if that becomes a thing. Um, and then you're right for the most part that like wing attack and ice beam give you similar coverage on grass types but the big difference is that ice beam um, gives you a better matchup in the mirror and I believe also gives you a better quagsire matchup 
So I think yeah. if you're running if you're running bubble and ice beam, you actually get really close to beating Quagsire. Okay. Bubble ice beam only ties Venusaur and the two shields. So it's really close. And does it win the zero and one or zero? Yeah. Mantine wins, wins, wins a zero, zero and one. one. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's closer, but it still wins. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're kind of trading off. Um, you don't win Venusaur as hard, but it does give you some better matchups against other stuff. Yeah. So, there's definitely some yeah, interesting makes, trade offs there. Yeah. And, yeah, there are kind of four viable movesets for it because you definitely want Aerial Ace, but. There's argument for both bubble and wing attack, and there's argument for ice beam or water pulse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm I'm not running a mantine on my team, which is why I'm not so knowledge up um, on the full move set here. But yeah, that that completely makes sense. Right. So what I'm curious, why did you pick Charizard over Mantine for that flyer spot? Um. I think I think nostalgia was a big one. Um, the blast burn I like um, for a lot of neutral hits, and then I don't like being um, with with like lantern out there. Um, I don't know. It's just I, I think it's just also the fear of like Raichu and Magneton, Legacy Magneton. Um, right. Um, I think Charizard stands a little bit better chance because, yeah. Um, plus, I couldn't. Yeah, I just I just like Charizard better, um, and I like um, the Dragon Claw and the Blast Burn that he brings um, to the field over over Mantine, over Mantine's move set. That makes sense. But um, in terms of Lantern, I'm guessing that Mantine has a better Lantern matchup actually. Because yeah. Lantern can farm Charizard pretty hard with that water gun and its bolt. <coughs> yeah. But Mantine's resisting water gun. Um, and is only weak to Thunderbolt. Yeah. So obviously Shields down is a little risky, but with Shields up, I would assume you have a better chance. But I guess all your moves are resisted, so I don't know. Let's see. Um... Yeah, with Water Gun, you lose all situations besides the Zero Shield on Lantern and the Two Shield on Mantine with Bubble, Ice Beam, Aerial Ace. Um, Charge Beam, Lantern, you lose all of it. And then Charizard. So. I think one, one reason I like uh, Charizard so much is that I kind of like being able to switch into stuff like for example, if a fortress is farming and he's really kind of in that range of low HP, can yeah. quickly, you know, chunk it out with a Charizard and he loses yeah. with energy. Yeah, that's that an was, option. That that brings up a good point. That was my other thing: is fortress is so relevant that I like Charizard as a hard stop to fortress over soft stop. Mm. Um, basically, I mean. Mantine's I, I pretty... see that Mantine's not really a soft counter though. Like if you look it's... at PV poke, uh, Mantine in all even shield scenarios is averaging yeah. like a like a six, seven, or eight hundred battle rating. For sure, it's just the fire spins take out a lot more damage. It takes a fortress out a lot quicker, so it, it requires a much faster reaction time out of the fortress user than perhaps Mantine. Oh, definitely. I, I agree with that. You could tank, so, though, uh, a rock to him, which Charizard can't. Right. There's yeah. pros and cons, for sure. Yep. Um, I think another thing that Charizard gives is it's not just, um, you know, a bug counter, but it's also a hard grass counter, which Mantine can sort of struggle a little bit, like, especially if you're running bubble. Um, it gives it a little bit better matchup, say with Quagsire, um, but and, and the fires, but it does struggle a little bit more against grass and um, you know, Razor Leaf can also hit Mantine a lot harder than say Charizard as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I like Charizard for the Fortress where you don't have to use a charge move. Um, you can just shield um, that Rock Tomb. Well, in the, zero, in the fresh start, he wouldn't get to a Rock Tomb in time. Um, but you can just kill with Fire Spins and have tons of stored energy. It's like a super dominant win. Um, and then, yeah, the, the Grass type thing as well that you had mentioned. I guess we can also cover the Charizard movesets of Wing Attack and Flamethrower versus Fire Spin, Blast Burn, or even Air Slash, Blast Burn. Um, yeah. Mason has been uh, yeah, propagandizing. Been uh, that. I yeah, don't. I think uh, really Air works. Slash. I think Air Slash Blast Burn is the worst of the three, if I remember correctly. Just from the Sims, it doesn't perform as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, the um, Wing Attack Flamethrower variant is interesting because it gives you a better matchup with like other fire types, and also gives you neutral damage against uh, water types. Um, and obviously Flamethrower is a bit slower and weaker than Blast Burn, but they still, for the most part, function similarly. Um, so there's a few trade-offs there. And the mirror. Yeah, when you attack Flamethrower, it yeah. wins the mirror. The trade-off, of course, you know, Magneton now totally eats your lunch. <coughs> yeah. And, um... As do you're, you're, not, you're not doing as much damage as opposed to Fortress. You still win, of course. There, there's some trade-offs here and there, and, and Blast Burn Nuke is not available anymore on, on Legacy Wing Attack. But, yeah, there's a place for it, for sure. And then I guess the last multi-set we can cover, well, there's two. There's the Lapras one of uh, either Ice Shard with Dragon Pulse, Ice Shard with uh, Ice Beam, the Raid Day, or you can run Water Gun Ice Beam or Water Gun Dragon Pulse. And, yes, I see the chat. I don't, I don't think... I don't think Water Gun really has much consideration here. I think the main appeal of Lapras is the Ice Shard giving you a decent Venusaur matchup where you can, especially like in the two shield, you can uh, basically just double shield and farm for the most part. Hmm. Then... I guess the last one to cover would be Ninetales, so there's either the Legacy one with Flamethrower and then Faint Attack as a fast move, or you run Fire Spin with Solar Beam, and then both sets have Psyshock. Sci the yeah. Faint Attack variant actually beats the Fire Spin variant in the mirror, and it does slightly better against the Confusion users, but worse overall against the Grass types. Um, I don't know. I could see, I could see the mirror, but um, I know Solar Beam could take so many people by surprise and not be ready for it because they'll think if they're running a Nine Tails instead of a Charizard, right? You're thinking they have Flamethrower, Psy Shock, but then you have Psy Shock, Solar Beam. Like you don't even have Legacy, and you just you one shot Azumarill or you one shot that Quagsire at the end. I've seen it happen, and it, it all it, all you have to do is in a best of three series you got to win two, and if you can pull that off in the third of the best of three, then you move on to the next round. So I think there's a lot of merit to it, um, but it's very like stars have to align for it to happen. There was another question for you on Twitch chat from Sticks. He said, Zionic, what's the food you miss the most from the U.S.? In and Out Burger from the West Coast. Yeah! 100%, man. I haven't had that in a decade. Oh. In and Out Burger. Yeah. Uh, I, grew up in, I grew up in California, and I haven't had that since I was like 17 years old. It's hold overrated. It's, it's, 
Oh, it's overrated now. It wasn't overrated back then. <laughs> <laughs> now you got like Five Guys and Smash Burger and whatever else is out there. Yeah. Man, In and Out is a cult. I don't care what you guys say. That's a cult. Yeah. Oh, dude, it so is. So it is good. good though. Has it has it expanded yet? Have they actually gone to more states, or is it still like the West Coast? There's a little bit in Nevada, and there's one. There's a few in Austin and Dallas, but they're not like spread over Texas or anything. Okay, so I mean, just made it to the East Coast yet at all? No. Just the they, fact they that there's just the fact that there's so many off menu items. It just feels like it's just like a secret club. You have to be oh, invited to, right? <laughs> yeah. That's funny a cult. Funny story. <laughs> the um the first time I ever had In and Out Burger, I had to have been a kid, right? Probably eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. And I took a bite of the burger and I thought it was absolutely disgusting. And I didn't realize at the time that you know how they put that they used to put this I don't know if they still do now, they put this light thin brown paper around your bun inside this the white sleeve. So it looks the paper looks like the same color as the bun. Do you guys remember that, or is they still? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're saying that you ate the paper, right? Yeah, I ate it's the paper. Thing. I ate the paper, and I was disgusted with In and Out as a right. kid. And I was you're like, saying that no. you're a rock, and In and <laughs> Out is paper. Beat me. Yeah, paper beat me. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, you know, as a kid, you get these like, oh, I hate hot dogs. So you never eat hot dogs, but then you grow up and you try a hot dog. You're like, eh, it's all right. That's what happened with In and Out. I didn't have In and Out again until I was like 14, 15. Um, and I had it, and I realized when I took a bite, I was like, I looked at the paper, and I remembered that last time I was here, I accidentally ate that. You're not supposed to eat that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's funny, man. I, I don't remember learning that lesson, but that's good. Yeah, it's, don't, you don't ever, yeah. You skip don't eat lesson. paper. <laughs> don't eat paper, yeah. The words of the wise. <laughs> don't eat paper and don't sniff glue. <laughs> All right. Um, it's Smog on Devo is gonna try to say something. Um, let's see if he can uh, try to talk now. I see the green circle around his name, but nothing's coming out. Crickets. That's really weird. Yeah, it's showing his icon as speaking, but there's no audio coming through. He's typing, I think. Yeah, um, do you want to just kind of... Because I think uh, you're a little more knowledgeable about uh, Ninetales movesets. Um, if you want to maybe just type out a couple sentences on the chat um, that we could discuss. So we'll cover that, and then we'll cover one question from a Twitch chat asking each of us what's our sacred, sa uh, favorite secret off meta pick that we're going to use and then we'll end the stream after that well if it's secret and we tell it to you then it's not going to be secret anymore okay secret but it has to appear on the infographic Hey, uh, are you guys able to hear me now? You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. So I guess it's just. Oh, never mind. He cut out again. Did he just mute himself? Yep. Is it working now? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> okay, cool. So I guess I'll just jump into the Nine Tails stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. So basically there's three sets that I was kinda looking at. Uh so you got like faint attack and Psy Shock. Usually actually you just want Psy Shock, you don't really need that second charge move. But uh with that
faint attack or fire spin will do well. If you're just looking at like faint attack, fire spin, and psy shock, you still have a ton of positives with it. You uh, you'll beat Venusaur in the one shield. You got a good chance versus Raichu, uh, Charizard as well. You got Fortress and B. There's a small exception with Fortress. You can pick your Confusion user, and there's the Tentacruel matchup as well. So to explain a bit, with uh, Venusaur, either Faint Attack or Fire Spin with Psy Shock will actually win. Of course, with Fire Spin, you can farm the Venusaur. Versus Raichu, Faint Attack will tie more, most likely. Fire Spin will win. Charizard with Faint Attack, you win. Fire Spin, you'll most likely tie. Fortress, you need Flamethrower when you're using Faint, but otherwise Fire Spin can farm it. Beedrill, you can farm with Fire Spin, but with Faint Attack, you have to be careful of Sludge Bomb. Uh, the Confusion users, with Faint Attack, you can beat Poke. With Fire Spin, you can beat Executor. And with Faint Attack, you can also take on Tentacruel, so there's that. So which of those movesets do you like the best? So I think, like, I've messed around with the Flamethrower variants, so I was looking at Faint Attack and Fire Spin with Psy Shock. I tend to prefer the Fire Spin variant just because I can farm, but uh, I do like Faint Attack because you can apply a bit more pressure versus water types, especially if you have, like, an Acid Spray user. Uh, but the cool thing with the Fire Spin set is you don't really, uh, or sorry, you can actually afford to run Solar Beam, which is cool. Because you have so many more chances to farm, like versus Beedrill, Fortress, Executor, for example. So I like that one with Solar Beam. If I had to like say my favorite, I'd probably pick Fire Spin, Psy Shock, and Flamethrower, though. All right, thanks for uh, chiming in with that, because uh, you're obviously a lot more. You've looked into that a lot more than we have. But yeah, I just finished my uh, showcase for it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's definitely one of the better fire types. Uh, just because it doesn't lose to those electrics like Charizard does, or even Mantine. And it still like beats Venusaur, which is great. All right, did you guys have anything else you wanted to cover, or should we wrap up the stream? I think there was a question on the chat about the Fortress. Um, I'm, I can't remember exactly how in-depth we went with the moveset, but they were asking about Rock Tomb and Heavy Slam. So I guess if we could just hit that really fast. Yeah, sounds good. Well, you know, yeah. bottom line is that all three of them are really good. Rock Tomb gains you the possibility of a one-hit knockout on Charizard. Earthquake makes it a little bit more favorable. I believe against Quagsire, and obviously like Electrics and such. Heavy Slam is really good for baiting, but it's not like amazing coverage. And then you can sort of hit like Venusaur pretty hard while you know farming up on the rest of you know whatever whatever's left of of Venusaur's uh, HP. There's just yeah, the very big good problem with heavy, all of them. The biggest problem with heavy slam is steel's resisted by water, electric, and fire. Yes. So the coverage for heavy slam is a little bit lacking. It it it's not no it's not about coverage. Um, you you hit neutral on a decent amount of things, but you're right. Heavy slam is resisted by a lot of the meta. It's just that you're able to shield bait a lot more. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. The shield yeah. bait potential is good, but I'm just talking about in terms of, like, type coverage. It's resisted by a lot and not really super effective against anything. For sure. What do you think, Zionic? Um, I like, well... I like the shield bait that Heavy Slam has, um, especially if you have tons of stored energy. Um, <clears throat> and maybe a Pokemon like Mantine comes in and they think it's going to be a Rock Tomb and you get that Heavy Slam off um, for the shield bait. Um, what's kind of interesting in the mirror match, if you have a Rock Tomb Earthquake versus a Earthquake Heavy Slam, the Earthquake Heavy Slam wins 
um, in well, it ties in the zero, but it wins in the other shielding scenarios because it's able to um, bait out the moves with heavy slam and then land um, earthquakes. Because basically, the shield bait would be with rock tomb instead of earthquake. Um, so I think heavy slam kind of has a. Well, I'm assuming it only it only wins if it correctly shield baits, though, right? Yeah. Because the other variant just goes for straight earthquakes and you mess up a shield bait, then they might beat you, right? Yeah, let's see. I'll put it in none. Yeah. I I just... um. Right now, I like Heavy Slam Rock Tomb, um, but I can totally see Earthquake working as well, so I'm just going to have to do more testing with it, especially now that it's out of Sims for me, and I can actually use it in battle to see how it feels. Um. Because the Sims are great, right, for fresh starts, and you can kind of line stuff up based on fights to go into the next Pokemon. But it's it's really like how it plays out in battles because it's a lot. It's similar, but it's it's also different. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, I was a uh, I scrimmed uh, last week with uh, Polly, and he was running Fortress with Heavy Slam Earthquake, and there was there was multiple games where. Uh, he got his fortress in and was able to farm some energy, and then after that, I got I brought my Charizard in, and I had no shields left. And if he had had Rock Team, that would have been a one shot. Yeah. But because he didn't, he ended up losing. Yeah. Um, yes. Where you know the the Sims will show you that like you know Rock Team, you're still gonna lose to Charizard, but that's because those are all like just even shield, right. even energy situations. Exactly. But in practicality, you know. You get Fortress and you're able to farm a little, and then the Charizard comes in, and if you can land that Rock Tomb, it's a one-shot kind of a thing. Oh, yeah, and so many people... I made this mistake, and the first time I faced a Fortress, um, it was farming. I think I led um, like with Venusaur or something, and he was starting to farm me, and this was like day one. He's farming me, and I realize he's farming me, so then I switched to Charizard, and then he does his charge move, and I'm like... He couldn't have gotten to Rock Tomb by now. It's probably Heavy Slam, so I didn't shield, and then it was Rock Tomb. And I'm like, wow, okay. Um, stored energy on a Fortress is nasty when you come in, because especially into Charizard, you, you're going to have to shield. Like, you can't risk that one shot, because they could have it. Yeah, definitely. And it's, like, impossible to count. Like, how are you going to count Bug Bite? <laughs> it's just, if you're I don't king. Know. If you're king, yes. <laughs> king, king, is, king is very good at that. But I can't. It, to me, it just feels like. Um, do you guys remember Beyblades growing up? No, mm. no one. Someone in the chat must. No, we must have it missed was... it along with the anti don't eat paper lesson. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> basically the same time like Yu Gi Oh and stuff was out, like Pokemon Yu Gi Oh, all that stuff. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they know Beyblades. Um. It, basically, just think about Fortress. It would have been a Beyblade, and then you like pull this string when you're battling other um, kids in the neighborhood, and then the Beyblades bash each other around, and the last one spinning wins. Basically, Fortress reminds me of a Beyblade, and there's like you can't count how you can't count how many spins it's doing. It's just going crazy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, have a YouTube you could, you on know, Beyblades. Second. You'll 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 remember it real quick. You remember? Ah, uh, yeah, I used to watch that program on Saturday mornings. Yep. <laughs> Wait, but so you said you're running heavy slam and rock tomb? Yeah, right now. Um, just because I don't have the TMs to test the field, because I'm waiting to see what worlds. It right. Is. I need to save all my TMs. Right. So that's just that's but what I got you... on the unlock. Okay, but I'm assuming then that's gonna. Like, you're probably hurting in the mirror match then, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm hurting in the mirror if they're running Earthquake. But if they're not, then it's just a back and forth of not hard. Heavy same, yeah. <laughs> it's just a... Yeah. Okay, but if you had TMs, which, what, what do you think you'd be running? Um... I think, I think initially right now I'd probably go with Earthquake Rock Tomb, um, because I I want to still have my coverage while also being able to 
hit stuff really hard like fortress just farm 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 and then big moves are coming like it's gonna force shields and if you don't you're gonna suffer um yeah that makes sense i think earthquake and rock team does give you the best overall coverage yeah against the field yeah because it's like you can soak so much damage and farm a ton of energy and then it's like it's like quagsire but just tankier and that you don't you don't get the energy as fast but you know what i mean like it's just the yeah. next thing that this is about to hit is gonna hurt I can well, it's cover. Just, yeah. It's like an inferior like edge quake, right? Like Rock Tomb's just a much worse move than Stone Edge, but it's yeah. the similar coverage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But for now I'll be throwing heavy slams out and wish I had I wish that was an earthquake. All right. So anything else um from like Twitch comments or that any of you guys want to mention before we end this? Um, a lot of repeat questions, like, you know, all of this is recorded, it'll be uploaded to YouTube, and, uh, absolutely you'll be able to see all the discussion. Um, you know, if, if one of your questions wasn't, wasn't, uh, met, if we lost it, um, you can always ask it in the, either Rainbow Discussion channel on our Discord, um, or on the Rainbow Help, which is more for, you know, team building exercises, and a lot of very knowledgeable people, even people that aren't, you know, necessarily comfortable going on the mic, comfortable uh, giving you advice. And uh, someone just posted that Discord link on our Twitch. Uh, appreciate it, Sticks. But, um... Yeah, thanks for um, having me, guys. This was fun. Learning up some stuff, like especially like Mantine. I didn't look in it mm. too much, so thank you for learning me up on him. Um, oh, yeah, that's one thing I was going to mention before we end this is the interesting about Mantine is it can tank uh, Rock Tomb for Fortress. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, even if you have that, like, heavy slam for shield bait that d might not help you because the man time might say whatever i'm just gonna tank this mm -hmm. and then if you tried to bait with a heavy slam then you look really bad yeah yeah and i think it's the um i think it goes back to the situation where you had in uh kingdom cup where you had a steelix versus a bastiodon and you were like the bastiodon was locked in you locked in steelix to it you don't shield bait at all you go earthquake every time because if they shield, cool. But if they don't shield and you just tried to use crunch, you just ugh. Yeah. So definitely. Bad. Like you just you just go earthquake every time. And like I saw people trying to shield bait with Steelix on Bastion. I'm like, what are you doing? They're not gonna no one's gonna shield. They know they're dead. Just let them die. <laughs> so I think that, that I wouldn't go heavy slam, I would just go rock tomb every time. Definitely. Yeah, I learned a lot too. I, be, I you know, I, I already knew that rock beats scissor, and scissor beats paper, but I didn't know Zionic. that. 